Welcome to the Comlex Instant Podcast. Let's talk about tension pneumothorax. On physical exam, you should find signs of tachycardia, tachypnea, hypotension. Patients will have cyanosis. You may see distension of the neck veins. Tracheal deviation may be present in a tension pneumothorax. Some patients will present with signs of subcutaneous emphysema indicating advanced tension pneumothorax, decreased breath sounds, hyperresonance, and a systolic blood pressure that's less than 90, along with a low PaO2 are all signs that you will find on physical exam. Moreover, the lungs will have decreased or absent breath sounds, ipsilateral crackers or wheeze, decreased air entry, and in order to make the diagnosis of a tension pneumothorax, you should obtain a chest x-ray which will show signs on one side of hyperexpansion, increased in rib separation, lucency, um, abdominal quadrant hyperlucency in particular, and a deep sulcus sign which is near the lateral costophrenic angle. Moreover, patients may have diaphragmatic depression and a mediastinal shift. There's also a flattening of the heart border. On the contralateral side, there may be a tracheal deviation and, in addition, subcutaneous emphysema. Also, patients would benefit from obtaining a arterial blood gas, which will show signs of hypoxemia and immediate and progressive uh, decrease in the arterial and mixed venous um, SpO2 is seen in mechanically ventilated patients. Some other testing you may want to consider is central venous pressure measurements, pulmonary arterial pressure measurements, and um, the mixed venous oxygen saturations. There is an increase in both the central venous pressure and the pulmonary arterial pressure, but there's a decrease in the mixed venous oxygen saturation. So what are some of the most important complications of a tension pneumothorax? Well, it's life-threatening condition, and so cardiac or respiratory arrest are likely if the tension pneumothorax is not treated. And also, patients who have acute respiratory distress syndrome or pulmonary contusion or hemorrhage may have an increased risk for developing lung disease. Also, hemothorax is another condition that you would want to treat. What are the causes of tension pneumothorax? Most common cause is any acute penetrating chest trauma. So any acute penetrating or blunt chest trauma can lead to the tension pneumothorax and what happens is that there is air in the pleural space which creates a one-way mechanism of trapping the air. Also the air accumulates and increases on one side increasing the intrapleural pressure and causing the lung to collapse and there is diaphragmatic depression along with chest wall expansion and in patients who have mechanical ventilation here the intrapleural pressure rises even more quickly and there is compressive effects including that on the vena cava. So these patients are at high risk for cardiorespiratory collapse and should be adequately treated. Now what about some of the treatment for patients with tension pneumothorax? First you should make sure that the patient receives high flow oxygen along with upright positioning of the patient then consider needle decompression. You don't want to wait for chest x-ray if the patient is unstable. And by unstable means that patient has any respiratory or any sort of a hemodynamic compromise. So 
you should obtain the chest x-ray immediately but don't wait until the results come back uh, to do the needle decompression with the needle decompression the access point is typically at the fourth or fifth intercostal space in the mid axillary line and the aspiration is important because it helps relieve the pressure also tube thoracotomy may be used in some cases and needle aspiration is as effective as tube thoracotomy uh, for patients who are presenting initially with signs of a tension pneumothorax moreover there are certain prophylactic medications that may be beneficial for patients um, and you want to consider the fact that patients will um, need some analgesia support in these cases and aside from that remember to focus on prevention such as uh, making sure that patient is not exposed to high altitude because that can worsen the pneumothorax or deep sea diving is also contraindicated some research recently shows that the needle aspiration is as effective as tube thoracotomy um, for pre-hospital treatment of tension pneumothorax moreover the potential complications from immediate uh, chest decompression from the needle include respiratory distress, absent breath sounds, cyanosis, and the indications for needle decompression are a oxygen saturation that's less than 92, systolic blood pressure that's less than 90, a respiratory rate that's less than 10, um, a decreased level of consciousness, and those are some of the most important factors you want to consider in patients who have attention pneumothorax. Also, small spontaneous pneumothoraces do not always require treatment because they may be unlikely to proceed to respiratory failure or a tension pneumothorax. So, the specific indications are important and the size of the pneumothorax is also important because if it's small which is less than 50 percent and there's no breathlessness and there's no underlying lung disease then you may not need to treat the patient immediately in a large primary spontaneous pneumothorax that's associated with breathlessness the um, guidelines mention the insertion of a chest tube along with local anesthetic and aspiration may be considered um, in a secondary pneumothorax of a moderate size without breathlessness so first line aspiration in primary spontaneous pneumothorax reduces the number of people requiring admission to the hospital significantly as opposed to tube drainage without uh, increasing any risk of major complications that was a board review of tension pneumothorax. Thank you for listening and good luck in medical school and on your board exam.